What is good, everybody? It is your boy, Pat the Designer, back at it again. How are y'all feeling today, Chicago? We got a Bears dub. We got a Bears dub. We got a Bears dub, and we are here to talk about it for the post-game show. I know I said I wasn't going to be in studio this week for the post-game show, and I really wasn't supposed to be. But whole snafu with a hotel, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, we are here, and we are here to talk about Bears. First things first, as always, y'all know how we do it. Let me get a Bear down in the chat from everybody. Let me get a Bear down in the chat. Y'all know how we do. That was a big win today. That was a big win today, Bears fans. Let me hop up in here so I can read y'all comments. Y'all know how we do. Yeah, I love to see it. I love to see it. Hey, Jay Garf in the live. I love to see it. Demario in the live. Bear down, my boy. Braden in the live. What's good? Jay Critt in the live. Bear down, my boy. Bear down. Let's talk about what we just saw. Let's talk about what we just saw. We just saw a W. We just saw a W. Are you kidding me right now? Did we really just, just beat Brady for the first time in our career? Or in Tom Brady's career, I'm sorry. The Chicago Bears have defeated Tom Brady. If you're in the live right now, like the video, subscribe to the page. We do talk Chicago sports weekly. We don't want you to miss a thing, so make sure that you hit that bell. By the way, this video is brought to you by Martinelli Originals. They're the people that give us these lovely Chicago Bear heads. You can get you one by checking out the link that I might have in the description below. I don't even know right now. I just I hopped on here. I wasn't supposed to be on here, but we got to talk about this game, right? It's really the tale of a few minutes. The Chicago Bears come out. Nick Foles looking inept. Let's be honest, looking inept to the point where I'm like, bro, this dude is terrible. Like I'm I'm losing my mind in the first. Because Nagy is scheming open players left and right. This team as a whole has not put together a full game still. Nagy is scheming open players left and right. Nick Foles can't hit them. Hit them in the hands, bro. Come on now. Next thing I know. Uh-oh. The defense is here. Ladies and gentlemen, player of the game. Let's give it to Khalil Mack. Everybody, he heard y'all. He heard y'all talking that trash. He heard y'all talking that trash. He was like, I got something for you. Oh, I got something for you. Defense. I don't want to hear anybody this week saying anything about defense because the man that put up five touchdowns last week could not get away from the pressure tonight. And this was not a mediocre offensive line that we were facing. This was not a, a, a mediocre quarterback that we went a little older, but he not mediocre quarterback that we were facing. And the Chicago Bears brought the pressure. That's what I want to see. That's what I want to see out of these Bears. Bear down. That's what I want to see. And was it pretty? And not at all. Not at all. It was not pretty in the slightest. It was not pretty in the slightest. But at the end of the day, you got in there and, and, and credit, credit, credit. Listen, I know, I know I came out hard on Nick Foles, right? I came out hard. And I think that he played, he played very mediocre. Very mediocre. But I'ma tell you right now. Look, look at me in my eye right here. Look me in my eye right here, Breeze, Breeze fans right here. Look, look me in my eye. I'ma tell you exactly who we need to be talking to today. What does Juan Castillo do in practice? What does Juan Castillo do in practice? Because clearly it's not coach the offensive line. What does Juan Castillo do in practice? We have watched this offensive line week in and week out, get Mr. Trubisky almost killed, get Nick Foles. I thought Nick Foles was going to die tonight. I thought Nick Foles' life was going to end tonight. If you're in the live right now, let me know how you feel about that offensive line play. It was horrible. It was horrible. I have not seen an offensive line play so badly in a win in my life. Charles Little Jr., were you even there? I think we could have got better blocking if he had just left the spot wide open. I think we could have got better blocking if he had just left the spot wide open. The 
way that those linemen, what the, the way that that defensive line was breaking through there. We got the W though. We are a four and one football team. Don't let nobody else tell you otherwise. You know what we gonna hear tomorrow? Uh, they're four and one, but you know they're are they really like they beating a beat up team and they beat them? No, this defense is legit. This defense came to play against the again in the last two weeks against one the quarterback who's throwing what seventy eight percent, throwing about seventy eight percent completion rating. We held him to one touchdown, nothing but field goals and 19 points. And then against the GOAT, who's coming off of a five-touchdown game, we hold him to what? What did he get? Just the one touchdown, right? I believe he only had the one touchdown. Feel good about the W, Bears fans. Feel good, but understand that there's things we got to improve upon. We have to. We have to. If you're in the live right now, like the video. Let me check some of these comments. James Martin, look, look, look. This is how confident I am in this. James, let me know if I'm right. All he said was trash, and I guarantee you he's talking about the offensive line. Let me know in the comments if I'm right, James. Uh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Y'all got the comments coming in. I appreciate the love. Uh, Jordan Clemens with a good comment here. Bear down, the issue I had was the Aaron pass to Mooney and a few throws off target. Best well-rounded game of the year, but still needs improvement. Nagy almost lost us the game calling a pass, a pass play. I'm going to talk about that pass play, too. I'm going to talk about that pass play because we do need to have a conversation on it. I, I'm, I'm on a different thought process, which is probably Matt Nagy's thought process with it. So I get why he made the pass play. Is it the right play you should make there? Absolutely not. But I understand why he did it. But I'm gonna talk about that. I'm gonna talk about that uh, a little bit later. Demario 19 totally agree. I thought I thought I was blocking the bus. You might as well have been, bro. You might as well have been. I don't know what's happened to Cody White here. I we know we saw James Daniels get hurt. Alex Bars. That's that's the guy y'all wanted on Twitter. That's the guy that was touting. Uh, that Twitter was touting is the the best offensive line. The dude that basically fell on his back on play one. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. There's a reason he ain't on the field. Uh, Jay Garth, that was 05 Bears line. We talking offensive or defensive? Honestly, both is factual. <laughs> both is factual. <laughs> um, Kingly, man, they need to draft a left tackle, right tackle, first round 2021. You got to see. We got to see who we got. We got to see who we got. You know what I'm saying? We got to see who we got. Um... Right guard, James Daniels might be out for the season. Oh, I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear that. Is that the news that's going out? Let me check. Let me check. Let me check on uh, uh, on Twitter because that'll be bad. This is this is the offensive line that was already down. Um, so listen, let, let me let me focus here. Let me. I'm excited. I'm glad y'all talking to me. I appreciate y'all for having the conversation with me. But let, let's talk about this game though. Let's continue on this. Let's give Nick Foles credit where it is due. Nick Foles stood in there. And he took the shots. And he made some passes that he had to make. Was it pretty? No. But I can't put a ton of this on Nick Foles. Just like if the offensive line was as bad as it was, I couldn't put it on Mitch Trubisky. Like, if I've never seen him that bad, bro. Like, with Mitch, like, they were bad, but, like, that bad? Like, they looked like they had never blocked before. They looked like they didn't have an understanding of what it was to be an offensive line. I have never seen an offensive line that bad in my life. It, I, I, was, I was physically impressed that they could be that bad. I was actually impressed that they had the ability to be that bad. Remember at the beginning of the season, we were talking about how, oh, everything's back in place. They might be going back to the old Bears. The 2018 offensive line, get out of here. The must look like the offensive lines they used to guard Cutler. I like what I saw. And listen, I, let's hope Darnell Mooney is healthy as well. I think Anthony Miller lost the job tonight. Because I didn't see them look to him a lot. I saw them look to him on that one pass. But look, that's what happens. That's what happens. 
That's what happens when you drop big passes. When you when they put you in the position to make these catches and you not making them, and a rookie's doing it. That's what happens. What'd you expect? What'd you expect? I think Anthony Miller lost his job tonight. When I look at the job Nick Foles did tonight, was it great? Absolutely not. But was it was it uh, um, what the Bears needed? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because guess what? He stood in there and he took those shots. He stood in there and he took those shots and he tried to make plays. Now I don't, I don't really like you trying to to go too far, trying to trying to extend the play all extra. You know what I'm saying? Because to me, I think we almost had what two turnovers from that, two turnovers from that. But if I'm looking at the job, let me let me pull his stats up here. If I'm looking at the job that Nick Foles did, he did exactly what we asked him to come in here and do. Oh, and by the way, he did it with a terrible offensive line. Nick Foles, 30 for 42, 243 passing yards, one passing touchdown, one interception, took three sacks, and uh, he did have the fumble, but he but we recovered it. He, he did have the fumble, but he recovered it. But Nick Foles came out, and guess what he was? He was a game manager. He didn't try to do too much. In fact, I respect Nick Foles for going to the sideline on that fumble, looking at Matt Nagy and saying, yo, why are you slowing us down? Let me run this offense. I got it. You brought me here for a reason. Let's have the conversation. Let me run this offense. Let's get back out there and get it together because we shouldn't have been kicking field goals on that. We shouldn't have been kicking field goals on that. I look at the job, and I, I don't want I don't want any of the Trubisky truthers. I don't want anybody who's just you know I'm kind of in the middle. I'm just like whoever will play quarterback well and get us get us touchdown. That's all I care about. That's all I care about. Nick Foles came out and he managed this offense, and he kept the defense for the most part off of the field. For I, I don't I don't think we had too many three and outs. I know we had two that I remember two two. Four, three and outs that I remember because I was just like Matt Nagy what are you doing but for the most part Nick Foles was managing the offense I'm here for that I'm here for that if you're on the live right now please like the video please subscribe to the page we talk Chicago sports weekly that's what we do on this page this is Windy City the Breeze baby this is Windy City the Breeze when Matt Nagy comes out and listen, I got I got some more. Let, let, let's get on Nagy as well. Let's get on Nagy as well because Matt Nagy, you came out in the third quarter after scoring a touchdown in the second half, and you called three of the dumbest plays I've ever seen called. Literally, what was it? It was it was it was a screen out right. It was a they tried to do the 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 little out route to Cordero Patterson, a little little flip out. I think it was another wide receiver screen, and then what? Just just nothing, nothing. And then you punting. That's the one three and out I know. You got to attack in those situations. These are situations. That, this is the thing. Matt Nagy want to go downfield when it's third and 16. All right, cool. We got a pass interference call. I appreciate it. Good job. A little iffy on the call, but good job. You know what I'm saying? You went downfield on that. But it, you got to go downfield when these guys are on their heels. You took the lead. This defense is trying to get to, to Nick Foles. Because now they're like, oh, snap. He's trying to get in the rhythm. He's trying to get in the rhythm. Get to him, rush him. And they rushed him. And guess what Matt Nagy doing? He throwing it out to the side. He throwing it out to the side. Come on, bro. The play calling has to improve. The play calling has to improve. Now, as we talking about the play calling, right, let's talk about that play at the end of the game where Matt Nagy throws it on second down. We know why he threw it on second down. Bears fans, look at me. Look at me, Bears fans. Stay with me. Trust me here. Trust me here. We know exactly why he threw it on second down. What's the best option here? Is the best option really to trust Cario Santos? Is that the best option? We know why he threw it on second down. And I'm not going to lie to you. I was sitting here. I was calling it on second down. I was saying, please throw this ball. Because if you put this game in the hand of a kicker, we could lose everything. We could lose everything. Because honestly, this is one of those games. If you come out of this game three and two, 
Ooh, 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 it's people looking at you. It's people looking at you. Even though it was a competitive game, it's people looking at your offense like, what's going on? What's happening? What's happening? Why? Why? Why are you Why are you three and two? Why is this offense not putting up points? Now, we're still looking at it that way, but you four and one. Guess what that is? That's a little Band-Aid. It's a little Band-Aid over the dam that's leaking. That's a little Band-Aid. It's okay. I'll take it. I'll take it. But we know why Matt Nagy went for it on second down. And I don't want to see Muggs out here lambasting him for that because you were thinking the same thing. You might be thinking you, the only reason, the only reason Bears fans started coming out after Matt Nagy on that was because as soon as he did it, Fox was like, well, why would you do that? Why would you? Well, Fox, you mentioned the double doink about seven times. Let's let, look at me, Bears fans. Come on now. If you in that situation, you ain't got a kicker on the roster that you can trust. Are you are you 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 running it? Just trying to get it to a hash mark? That's what you're doing? That's what you're doing? I'm not. Now we definitely have to make a commitment to the run, but not in that situation. Matt Nagy, you gotta be better on the run. Let me let me let me give you these rush yards. Let me give you let me give you these running stats. David Montgomery. 10 rushing attempts for 29 yards. Cordell Patterson, three rushing attempts for seven yards. Nick Foles, one rushing attempt for negative one yards. Uh, Matt Nagy, now look, I give you a pass kind of on this one because this is the best rush defense in the NFL. But when I'm looking at your running backs, I've never seen and, and look, I devalue running backs. I think that running backs are a dime a dozen. You can find them wherever. And uh, to the same thing, the offensive line is giving David Montgomery nothing to work with. Like, this man is making juice out of no lemons. But when you look at the stat sheet and you see 13 rushing attempts, 14 with Nick Foles, but we're not even going to count that. You see 13 rushing attempts? Look, I'm not saying you got to run it 45 times, but you got to at least make them think you might. You're making things hard on your quarterback. The quarterback runs a RPO system. Run, pass, option. You take the R away, it's just a pass option. Guess what? Nick Foles ain't mad. He's not He's not Dak Prescott. He's not Matty Ice. You can't just send him out there. He, I realize I picked two quarterbacks that are really struggling this season right there, but they still putting up big yardage. I realize I, he's not Tom Brady. You can't throw it 50 times every week and expect magic to happen. We got to have a better commitment to the run. Now, this week, I'll give you a little bit more of a break because one, offensive line, horrible, terrible, garbage. They should all be fired. I would rather you put in five gorillas. I'm talking about from like Brookfield Zoo. Not Brookfield, not Brookfield. What's the other one? What's the other Chicago Zoo? I'm tweaking right now. I'm blanking because I'm hype. Um... Whatever it is, the one where all the old animals is at. Old gorillas, just have them stand there. They'll do a better job. Old, I'm talking about no teeth, nothing. Put them in there. They'll do a better job. They'll do a better job. Because this offensive line is a joke all the way around. All the way around. Lincoln Park. Everybody in the comments, shout out to y'all. Lincoln Park, y'all know where the old animals at. The snakes don't even slither no more in there. They just sit there and look at you. You know what I'm talking about. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Let's, let me look at some more comments, man. Let me look at some more comments. What y'all been talking about in here, man? Let me look at some more comments, man. Uh, Baki in the live was good, my boy. Good to see you. Good to see you. Jay Garf, only three minutes difference in time of possession is huge for the Bears defense. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, oh, man. Yeah. Uh, Tana so lit. That catch by Jimmy Graham. J bro. Uh, bro. Hey, that's 2008 Jimmy Graham. Did we just see 2008 Jimmy Graham out there? That was wild. Uh, Tanner so lit. That, that hit Fuller had on that running back. Pure nasty. Yeah. Yeah. Look, look. Kyle Fuller. Kyle Fuller out here. Kyle Fuller out here for you. Kyle Fuller out here for you. He he, he a headhunter on the low. 
And a lot of these bears are. Oh, this is okay. If anything, if anything, let me let me throw let me throw the people a bone because I know it's people out there that's gonna want to talk about the defense. Let me throw you a bone, right? If you want to talk about anything, I will allow you to talk about how terrible these Chicago Bears were tackling tonight. I will allow you to talk about that because that is something that needs to be addressed. I thought Roquan Smith was Casper the Friendly Ghost out there, how Ronald Jones was spinning him out of his shoes. He was going right through him. That's the only thing you can complain about at all, though. That's the only thing you can complain about at all because this defense came out here to ball. By the way, Khalil Mack, bear down. Let me get a bear down for Khalil Mack, bear down. That boy Mac came out to play today. And I still need to see more from Akeem Hicks. Where you been, bro? I need to see more from you. Because this is the this is why everybody want to talk about. Everybody want to talk about Khalil Mack is struggling. Khalil, Khalil Mack is doing this. Khalil Mack is doing that. Let me tell you something. How these defensive lines work. If you get pressure up the middle, the quarterback has to make a decision. Do I go left or do I go right? If I go left, oh, shoot. Robert Quinn's over there. Maybe I'll go right. Oh, shoot. Khalil Mack's over there. Now you got to make that decision. You got to pick one. That's usually how these sacks go down. What we're seeing this season is Khalil Mack and Robert Quinn setting the edge. And Akeem Hicks can't make the tech. Tom Brady literally stepped up into Akeem Hicks and got a pass off. You got to be able to make those plays. We need to see more from Akeem Hicks. But I love what I saw from this defensive line as a whole tonight. You were back in the backfield. The biggest thing you, Tom Brady when the pressure is on, has the second worst QBR in the NFL. When the pressure is on, Tom Brady has the second worst QBR in the NFL. And it's been that way for a couple seasons. And guess what? The pressure was on tonight. It wasn't on early, but that pressure was on going later on into that game. That pressure was on. And Khalil Mack out here throwing 300-pound men. I feel like we see Khalil Mack throw a 300-pound man every year. Every year we get a new highlight of him just throwing some grown man out of the way. Hey, son, have a seat. I feel like every year we see that. And we got our we got our throw today. We got our throw today. If you're on the live right now, like the video, subscribe to the page. We talk Chicago Sports Weekly. Jalen Johnson, the young rookie, still making a few rookie mistakes, but I... <clears throat> Excuse me. That was my air. That wasn't Rona. Uh, still making a few rookie mistakes, but I like what I saw in him on the pass defense. He was he was he was out there battling. And guess what? Tom Brady attacked him. Tom Brady knew what it was. Hey, yo, we got a rookie out here. Let's see what he can do. He attacked him. Tom Brady attacked him. But this Bears defense stood tall. This Bears defense stood tall. This is exactly what we need. This is exactly what we need. And when they needed to make the plays, they made the plays. When you needed to make the play, you made the plays. Kyle Fuller came out big. And and, and they finally got the turnovers they needed. We needed those turnovers. They finally got the turnovers they needed. The linebacking position, look, there's still there's still a lot. Man, Danny Trevathan, I understand you got old, bro, but that was fast. Like, the second you signed the contract, it aged? Like, that was fast, bro. But I love what I saw as a whole lot of this defense. Now, is it the 2018 defense? Absolutely not. But what we saw is bend but don't break. Were they in the red zone? Yeah. Guess what they was kicking? Field goals. They wasn't scoring touchdowns. They just wasn't. They wasn't scoring touchdowns. Field goal, field goal, field goal, field goal, field goal. Once again, your Chicago Bears defense held a team to 19 points, and your offense just did enough to get them there. I see y'all in the live bear down. Marquise Williams in the live bear down. Oh, 
Are there spots we still need to improve? Absolutely. And I'm not, I'm not going to tell you that it's all sunshine and fairies. My boy texts me. My boy Ringo texts me immediately after and was just like, y'all are the weirdest 4 and one team I've ever seen. He's not wrong. He's not wrong. But you are in a very, very good spot right now going into next week. A very good spot right now going into next week. And and the biggest the biggest problem happens to be your offensive line. That's the only thing that scares me. That's the only thing that scares me. Let me look at some of y'all comments real quick before we preview next week's game. Uh, Kofi, Mac came for blood. Yes, sir. B. Bill, Mac was eaten. Absolutely. Um, Joseph Walker, David Montgomery got his first touchdown of the touchdown. I think he means of the new season. Yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. Uh, James Martin, our offensive our offense needs to be more explosive to really make this defense dangerous. Um, yeah, I think the defense is already dangerous. But you see, let me tell you what the difference is in tonight. When you're not playing from behind, Damian Estrada in the light was good, my boy. When you're not playing from behind, you allow Khalil Mack the opportunity to pin his ears back and go out, go attack a quarterback. When you when you're playing from behind, you're trying to prevent touchdowns. Now you're trying to you kind of playing back. You're just sending a few people, but you're trying to stop the pass from going out because you know you got to You can't give up points at this point. Here tonight, we was in it. We was fighting. Attack. You took the leash off of him. Attack. Oh, by the way, first week he was off the injured reserve list. I'm not saying he might have been hurt the whole time. I'm just saying first week he was off the injured reserve list. Uh, let's see what else we got in here. Um, Chris classic zero as should Matt Nagy give up play calling. Um, see, here's what I'm at with Matt Nagy's play calling. We all want to attack it, right? We all want to say that's the reason Mitch struggled. He didn't adapt his system to Mitch. Um, the play calling we're, we're not seeing honestly at this point, talk to me. Is it just the Cordero Patterson plays? Cause I feel you on that one. Is it just the Cordero Patterson plays on play calling? Because unless it's a rush outside, I hate every run he does. <laughs> is it just those? Because that's what it is for me. Um, but when I look at Matt Nagy's play calling, I, I, you think about it. Early in that game, it's, um, what was the score? They hadn't scored a touchdown yet. So it was, it was three to nothing. They hadn't scored a touchdown yet. Darnell Mooney was wide open. Matt, Matt schemed out open Darnell Mooney wide open. And I believe the, uh, the other one he schemed open A-Rob wide open. The scheme, his scheme works. His scheme works. We may not like the, the quarterback that he has in there. We may not like that he went to Nick Foles. We may not like that he benched Mitch. Whatever it is, his scheme works. You just got to have a quarterback that can, that can hit those guys in the hands. If, if Matt Nagy had Deshaun Watson and he's calling those plays, guess what? Those are touchdowns. Heck, if Matt Nagy had Dak Prescott, those are touchdowns. If he had Matty Ice, those are touchdowns. If he had Kirk Cousins, those are... Okay, that might have been a little far. My bad. I, I take it back. I take that one back. That one might have been a little far. Kirk Cousins. <laughs> Kirk Cousins. My bad. Too far. All right, bet. Um, so I'm not... I, I, I don't have a big problem with, with Matt Nagy uh, taking ownership of the play calling. I really don't. I really don't because I think we see more good than bad. It's just every time I see Cordero Patterson run the ball, I want to blow my brains out. Is that, that's not weird, right? That's not weird. Okay. I'm glad. Um, let's see what else we got. What else we got in the comments? Uh, 85 flat mouse. You bugging? Maybe probably. I don't even know what I'm bugging about. Um, Oh, maybe he's telling me right now. D. Watt garbage foes smacked him last time they played. Okay. Was that a good you bugging or a bad? I don't know. I tried. I tried. Um, Jeremy Smith, Cordell Patterson should play wide receiver. Now, I, this is what I will say. As much as I hate seeing the Cordell Patterson run, the runs out wide aren't bad because Cordell Patterson knows how to hit a hole very hard. Pause. Jeez. Wow. Woo! Where's Ringo when you need him? Um, he knows how to he knows how to attack attack the defense, just because when you send him out wide, it's basically just like you sending him on a on a kickoff. You know what I'm saying? And so he's very good at that. But 
I want to see more of that. I need to see more of that more consistently instead of him running up the middle. Like, I don't ever want to see him run up the middle. When you're running him up the middle, you, you're literally just like, um, go. Like, the, everybody knows what's coming. Everybody knows what's coming. Uh, Mount Gooley, Nick Foles, his own Brady Super Bowl, and now with a different team. Wow. I mean, you could look at it that way. Listen, I'm just glad we got the W. We're we going to get out of here with our tail tucked between our legs and our heads held high. You know, those two things don't normally go together, but we're not going to brag on this one. It w The defense can brag. Defense can brag. Let, let the defense brag. Uh, Baki, Roquan needs to be better finishing. Tackles too many times. I see him trying to deliver hard hits and not a full tap. Man, listen, Roquan got one thing on his mind, and I give him credit for this because of him as a defender. He wants to kill you. If y'all watch how Roquan play football, he wants to kill you. Roquan would have been amazing in the in the eighties and nineties and early two thousands. He wants to kill you. The problem is sometimes he's a little too over aggressive, and them elusive backs hit him with the ah, ah, like, like the, like the, uh, like the Brady on Erlacher. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Uh, Kruger one thirty seven. We should not have won that game. I don't agree with that. I don't agree with that because it's not like it was a miracle that we won. You saw tonight, and I'll, I'll finish on this before I before I preview next week's game. You saw tonight. A Chicago Bears team that defensively was on his P's and Q's. And rocked a man who literally just came off of a five-touchdown game. You saw tonight that this defense is a Super Bowl caliber defense. And that if this offense can put anything together, you can go a long way. And you can compete with the top teams in this league. I don't think that we should have lost this game. I think that we won this game. We came out and won this game, and maybe we took it out of Brady's mouth. But we won this game. And for the first time, honestly, all season, this is the first game I can say that the Chicago Bears won. This is the first game that they came out, and literally they attacked defense. I mean, the, the, the two touchdowns, they attacked them. Now, in the second half, that's very different. I, we, we, can, we can have that conversation as well. The offense is bad. The offensive line is horrendous, horrible. But the Chicago Bears won this game. Don't take that away from them. Keep your heads held high, Bears fans. Maybe don't gloat as much. Maybe keep the tail a little down, you know. But keep your heads held high. We won this game. Damien, I swear at the last second of the game, I almost thought we were going to have another. You see, Damien, you, you bring a negative energy in here. Why are you doing that, bro? You can't bring up that. can't bring up that game. I can't even say what you just said in the chat, bro. You can't bring up that game. We're not doing that. We passed that. We passed that. Um, DeMario 19, Super Bowl type defense, hands down. No debate. Can't change my opinion. Absolutely. Uh, Kruger, don't get me wrong. I'm happy that we won. There's some questionable penalties that may have gone to our favor. Hey, look, we've had those penalties all season. We've had them called on us. I'm not tripping on the penalties at all, at all. Let's preview this game for next week, man. Let's preview this game for next week. Chicago Bears versus the Carolina Panthers. Panthers are now 2-2. Two and two. Teddy Bridgewater not playing bad, playing, playing decent. Uh, 1,100 yards already on the season, four touchdowns, three picks, 97.4 QB rating. He can do – we've seen what Teddy can do versus us. We've seen what Teddy can do versus us. But but you're you're going into a game that is a very winnable game, a very winnable game. Now, don't get cocky. Don't come out of this game and be like, oh, yeah, we got them, you know. No, 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 no. It's a tough game. Any week in the NFL is tough, but this is a very winnable game. This is a game that I see – Excuse me, that I think the Chicago Bears should come away with. And I like I like how this see, we got a lot of injuries, though. I'm not even gonna lie to you. Like it's it's a little they got some injuries too, though. They got some injuries too. I, I would say I would say the Bears, the Bears come out of that game with a win. There's gonna be there's gonna be a game on the schedule that's gonna be funky. 
And after a big win like this, there's two ways that this team could go. This team could go all out, attack, uh, um, um, continue to, to be dominant on defense, realize that they found their stride. Maybe maybe it was the fact that we didn't have a preseason this year, and now they're finding their stride, they're getting in the gear, and they're attacking. Or we could be overconfident. And we saw that a lot last year, right? We're going into games, oh, we got this. Oh, no, we got this. Don't even worry about it. We got this. You got to attack. You got to stay high. You got to stay high on this energy right now. And you get a little bit of extra rest. You're coming in versus Carolina Panthers team. That's also a little bit beat up. Hopefully, uh, the injury to uh, uh, um, James Daniels is not a a serious one. Not a I haven't I haven't checked any of the any of the post game show or anything yet. Um, so hopefully that's not a a serious injury. Oh yeah, we didn't even talk about Brady not knowing it was fourth down. Um, shout out to you, Tom. Shout out to you, man. You're, Keeping your head in the game. Hey, look, time getting old, bro. Time getting old. <laughs> the goat is getting old. It's time for the changing of the guard. Ah, uh, James Martin asked, "Is Christian McCaffrey injured?" Let me see. Let me check the injury report. He is. He is actually on IR with an ankle. I did not know that. Uh, McCaffrey to miss at least three games after landing on IR. Oof. So we are definitely catching a break. We are definitely catching a break. Uh, we're not going to face Christian McCaffrey. Um, we're not. We're, we're going in there against Teddy Bridgewater, who we know can do some really good things, but um, he's a very different player without that dominant running back behind him. Even when he was in uh, New Orleans, we know that that running back position really helped him out in that game versus us. So, um, let me know before I get out of here your predictions for next week's game. Um, let me get another bear down out of you. Let me get another bear down out of everybody in the chat. Let me know your predictions for next week's game. Um, I'm going to say Bears come out of that with the win. I can't say we're going to score big because I haven't seen it yet. <sighs> I'm going to say Bears come out with the win 21, uh, or, uh, I'm sorry, 24-16. I'm going to say Bears come out with the win 24-16. And, and this defense continues to roll. This defense causes havoc for Teddy Bridgewater. Here's the difference, though. Teddy Bridgewater is not Tom Brady. He is very mobile. So if you st if you bring that corner pressure and Teddy Bridgewater steps up and decides to take off, guess what? He going to take off. And Roquan and Danny haven't shown that they they paying that, that attention to the quarterback that they going to stop him from taking off. So. Let's see what we got. Let's see what we got in the chat. Malgooley, Bear Down, 26-17. Jay Crit. 21-10. Oh wow. Oh Jay, Jay, you got them, you got them winning big. You got us dominating that game. Uh Damian Estrada, Bears win 26-17. Classic zero, 24-20. Uh Demario 19. Bears got to dominate to show they forced my prediction 26-17. So y'all got y'all a little confident after the night. You beat the GOAT, you come out a little confident. I like that. Head hell high. Don't be talking too much trash this week. The game wasn't that great. You can talk trash on the defense, but you know, like I said, head high, tail a little bit down, you know. But it's all right. Uh, let me let me see this one. Goro Majima, twenty four seven Bears win. Ooh, ooh, you got a dominating game. You got a you got a controlled game. Controlled. Um, I am gonna get up out of here though, man. I am actually supposed to be on the road on my way. Uh, never mind. Y'all need to know all that. Don't worry about that. Don't worry about that. <laughs> I am going to get up out of here. It is your boy, Pat, the designer, back at it again. I appreciate everybody for tuning in. Y'all stay safe out there in Chicago. Make sure to check out Martinelli Originals if you want one of these lovely Chicago Bears heads. We're also doing the Love for Love giveaway. Um, Y'all stay safe out there. Y'all, man, I appreciate the love. Appreciate the love. Appreciate the love. So we're going to be giving back to you. Um, I'm going to get up out of here. Make sure to check out the other Bears videos, too. We also got the – oh, the podcast. Don't leave yet. Check out the podcast. Winnie City Debris podcast is up on all DSPs, downloadable streaming platforms. It's also – we also got the video up on the page. So check out the podcast for that. Um, what happened to this hype for Mooney, 19 yards? Are we, we, we leaving on trash talk, bro? We leaving on trash talk. That's what we're doing. Look, the offense struggled a little bit. We know. We know. I'm still hype on Mooney. Easy. Take it easy. Take it easy. Skills iOS, what's up? We getting out of here, bro. Y'all stay safe out of Chicago. I'm going to get up out of here, man. Peace.